Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And a very good evening to everyone. Okay. So, we will continue our lessons. Okay, so we will continue our lessons on uh, uh, motion in one dimension. So uh, I should highlight, uh, or we should do some recap uh, regarding our, les our lessons on um, Monday. Okay, so we actually have uh, have stopped until uh, equations of motions. Okay, so let's do some recap on what we have learned on Monday. Okay, so this is uh, the motion in one dimension. Can you see it or not, everyone? Yes. Yes. Okay, very well, very well. Okay, so, right, thank you. So this is chapter two, uh, the displacement, where we learn about displacement, velocity and acceleration. Okay, the three main topics uh, for the three main subtopics for the chapter two, uh, which will we'll discuss about displacement, velocity and acceleration. Uh, before today, we will continue on the uh, one dimensional motion with the constant acceleration and the last part will be a uh, free falling objects. So let's do some recap of what we learned just now. Uh, so this is the displacement where the displacement of delta x is, uh, is of an object is defined as the change in its uh, position which means delta x equivalent to a final position minus with initial positions with the SI unit of meters. Okay, so uh, we need to emphasize on delta x. Okay, normally in your school days you will, you will, you will use s as the displacement. So uh, starts from now, please change your normal behavior to delta x. Use a delta x. Delta means change, while x is the position, meaning change in position. So position final minus position initials. So this is the velocity part. Okay, the velocity is the average speed of an object over a given time interval is the length of the path it travels divided by the total elapsed time. So when it call, when it talk, when we talk about velocity, it have a quite a uh, narrow margin uh, when we uh, when we try to discuss the velocity and speed. Of course, there will be a difference between speed and velocity uh, in terms of the vector and scalar quantity. Definitely, okay, velocity is a vector quantity, which means it must con uh, must must have a magnitude and directions. So for the average speed, okay, for the average speed, uh, the total path length over the total elapsed time, so that will give you a speed. Okay, uh, normally in this chapter only we'll, uh, we will differentiate between speed and velocity. Uh, apart from that, maybe on the next chapter, maybe in the, in the, the few chapters ahead, okay, speed and velocity doesn't doesn't seem uh, to have much difference, okay? But the unit is still a meter per second, okay? So this is also the examples that we already discussed about the turtle and rabbit, where we should find the average speed. And of course, uh, using that particular uh, uh, equations, we also can find the times, okay? Uh, calculate the average speed and of course, calculate the, uh, the time taken, okay? And this is the average velocity with the use of V bar. Okay, average velocity is a V bar during a time interval uh, delta T. It's the di displacement delta X uh, divided with the delta T. Okay, change in time. Meaning that change in position over change in time. So in order to do that, we get average velocity or V bar. The unit for average velocity the same as the uh, unit SI unit for average speed, which is uh, meter per second. Okay, 
So in velocity, we also discuss about instantaneous velocity. Okay, the instantaneous velocity is V, is the limit of the average velocity as the time interval delta T becomes infinitesimally small, meaning that the delta T becomes really, really small so that we can actually get a V, which means uh, the difference between velocity, instantaneous velocity and the average velocity. Okay, the average velocity will talk about velocity at all the possible, uh, all the best possible uh, three or possible uh, uh, time taken. So in the, for the instantaneous velocity, we will uh, determine the value of velocity at the, at the very specific time meaning that we should emphasize on the usage, on the, the use of time, okay, penggunaan masa, okay, time equals to some things, then we should uh, substitute into the function. And of course, when we talk about instantaneous velocity, okay, uh, it will be, uh, it will use the same uh, methods as the average velocity because in the average velocities we get delta x over delta t. So, so with this instantaneous velocity, but uh, in the instantaneous velocity we can actually get the instantaneous uh, using maybe the differentiation of uh, x against time. Okay, the differentiation of position against time, meaning that we should differentiate Okay, function x, okay, you know x is position, so the function x uh, uh, as a function of time, x equals to blah, 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 t, so we can differentiate x against time. So when we get x against time, so dx over dt, so we can get actually v. So v, when we uh, is substitute the value of time, a certain time, maybe 5 seconds or maybe 10 seconds. That's why I'm telling you the instantaneous velocity is the time needed, the velocity at a specific time. Meaning that if you are given a time, let's say 10 seconds, time equals to 5 seconds, then you should substitute that 5 seconds into the function of velocity where after we derive from the differentiation of positions against time. Okay, we will see that on the next part. Okay. So this is the examples of how you can get the uh, average velocity, okay? Uh, when we do a graph of x versus time, the position versus time, okay, the total slope, the slope of the uh, graph is given by the word average velocity, okay? For x versus time graph, uh, the slope is equivalent to average velocity. How about vel uh, instantaneous velocities? So we can, we can already, we have already discussed that the instantaneous velocity will be the tangent. Okay, the tangent meaning that let's say here from B to C. Yeah, let's look at the figure A from B to C. That's a sign slightly a uh, curve graph. Okay, slightly curved graph. So we cannot find uh, a, like a normal slope. Okay, so in order to to do a slope, we need to define. Okay, which part? So let's say if you look at the questions, the find the the is or determine the instantaneous velocity at time t equals to nine seconds, meaning that okay you should project at the nine seconds where is the velocity. So here is likely um uh, it, at the curve part. So we need to do a tangent line. What is tangent line? So you should understand what is tangent line. Just a, a straight line that can touch that point. That point should be nine seconds. Okay. okay. So you can touch that point. And of course, now we can do, we can get the, uh, the triangle that we need to find the slope. Okay. So that is simple as that. Yes. Um, Kalau nak kira um, the slope of the tangent tu, nanti dia akan bagi grade ke? Grade macam mana? Uh, kan graph tu kan, uh, kan dia plot ikut grade. Nanti dia akan bagi grade kan kalau nak kira uh, the slope of the tangent? Definitely. Hmm, definitely. Uh, you cannot, you just cannot. Uh, sketch the graph, so you need to find it on your own. No, because uh, normally they will give you like a, a grid line like this, or maybe they will ask you to 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 draw a graph on the graph paper. Okay, but uh, most probably you will see the instantaneous velocity 
uh, during uh, using this kind of equations, okay? Uh, this kind of questions. Let's say uh, if you're given a, a x as a function of time, so meaning that uh, they give you x equivalent to a t square plus b. So x equals to you know x is position. So in 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 the uh, what's in the position? So x as a function of t. So meaning that you have t inside of x. So therefore you can dx over dt to in order to get. So let's say the last question asks you about determine the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity at time t equals to five seconds. So t equals to five seconds. Let's look what will happen. So x equals to a t square plus b. So therefore we need to differentiate the dx over dt uh, position against time in order to get a v. Okay, in order to get v, so you will get to a t. So therefore, you substitute the value of time t equals to 5 into this t, okay, in order to get 21 meter per second. So please remember, so that is an average acceleration, sorry, average velocity and instantaneous velocity. So let's look at the accelerations. So the acceleration is delta v over delta t meaning that change in velocity over change in time. And the unit for the uh, acceleration is ms negative 2, or m over s square. And look at the acceleration. Okay, acceleration uh, that normally increase in speed and deceleration decreasing in speed should not be confused with the directions of velocity. Okay, look at the uh, directions of velocity and acceleration. You can actually, uh, we cannot say that acceleration must follow the directions of velocity. Okay, because we can actually see, let's look here. In figure B and figure C, the acceleration and velocity uh, is against each other. Okay, so that's why uh, why is against each other because the deceleration occurs whenever the velocity and acceleration have opposite sign. So that will be the, the deceleration means. So the deceleration is negative a, okay? acceleration negative, meaning that decreasing in speed. So why? So what happened next? So we will see, okay, how to use it. And of course, this is the instantaneous acceleration. Again, so you have acceleration, average acceleration, and instantaneous acceleration. So what does it mean by instantaneous acceleration? The same goes, uh, the same we apply in instantaneous velocity. Okay, because A is equivalent to delta V over delta T instead of V is equivalent to delta X over delta T. And again, if you are given a function, please differentiate first. And of course, you can get acceleration. So this is the concept. Well, this is also the examples of the um, examples of um, the accelerations and how to get the instantaneous acceleration and so on. Okay, so you can actually see from this part uh, how to get the distance depreciation is is the same of uh, how we can we apply just that uh, this graph uh, the graph that involved in the acceleration. Okay, is equivalent to v against time. Okay, velocity against time. So the slope of the velocity against time graph will give you acceleration. Okay, so you can look at these examples, right? So let's move to the one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration. The word constant acceleration means the acceleration will be the same, not not like in the previous example like I, uh, let's look at the previous example okay on the first part of the motion okay the acceleration will be positive two meter per second square okay in the middle part okay it will be zero meter per second square and on the on the on the last part is negative two meter per second square so you can see a variety of value of different value of acceleration throughout the motion so this is uh, actually uh, not not uh, it cannot be happen when we want to use a one dimensional motions of equations equations of one and one d motions okay like the one we we want to do afterwards okay so 
when we try to uh, introduce to you to this kind of equation, you must be able to understand that all equations should follow the constant acceleration. Should you at least in the question, please uh, find the keywords that obtain this type of motion have constant acceleration. Itu yang berdrama sekali. We must make sure kita kena pastikan uh, untuk memakai equation ini uh, acceleration dia mesti constant. What does it mean by constant? It's not actually the constant should be zero. Okay, the constant means the value should be uh, consistent throughout the motions. Okay, I may hear one question from you. Uh, Muas, is can we have a copy of this recorded session for study purposes? Okay, inshallah, I will share to you. No problem. To your class, eh? Okay. Um. Right. So, after a certain derivations, okay, after a certain derivation, you will come to this part. Okay. So we have obtained a few equations. Okay, like uh, a very, uh, five equation, equation, uh, five equations all together. Okay, uh, I will I will name it as equation number one, two, three, four, and five. But the one that you should and uh, you should give more attention is for is just on uh, equation number one, number four, and number five. Okay, uh, how about the equations number two and number three? Okay, uh, the equation number two. Let's uh, let's all pay attention to equation number two. Uh, equation number two is v bar. V bar means uh, average velocity. Okay, average is purata. Okay, purata. So purata, you normally what you do or what you did uh, on purata is you can add all values in in the series of uh, numbers. And then you divide it with the number of that series. So for this case, if you do have v naught plus v, meaning that you do have initial velocity together with final velocity, so that means you have two values of v. So now you divide it with two, so you can actually get average velocity. As simple as that. Okay. So just divide final plus initial uh, sorry initial plus final divide by two so you can get final velocity uh, average velocity so that is quite common sense to ours because uh, when we do have um or um, average average means purata so let's say if you have one two three four five uh, one two three four five and of course you want to add up everything okay and let's say all number is one, so we need five divided by five, so the average is one. That's the, why we add all five because you have you plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, and of course, how many of them? Five, five series. So five series meaning that five divided by five number number of five, so you can get one. So that is quite common sense. Okay, because average when we have two values, so we need to divide it with two. Okay, let's now pay attention to the equations number three, which means delta x, meaning that the displacement is equivalent to half v naught plus v and times t. Right now, try to imagine if you bring down the t, okay, at the end of the right hand side. You bring down to the left hand side. So right, right now, your your del, uh, your, your on the left side should be delta x divided by t equivalent to half v naught plus v. And if you can relate it with the equation number two, half v naught plus v is actually the same as uh, v naught plus v divided by two. Am I right? Okay. So that's why. Uh, what I'm saying now is equation number two is a common sense and equation number three is just an extended version of equation number two. So meaning that from x divided by t, we can get v. Okay, v lah, a general terms of v, a velocity, a displacement against time. So dapatlah half v naught plus v. Okay, so meaning that uh, number two and number three is quite complementing each other. 
Okay, so that's why I'm saying that you okay, don't have to memorize all of this because of course uh, all uh, equations will be given for you inside the appendix. Okay, meaning that if you do, uh, you do, you will be able to under to to sit for your final examination, maybe your test. Okay, there will be a series of appendix given to you, so you don't have to memorize. Okay, please find. Okay, please make sure you do have some space <laughs> inside your brain. Don't have to memorize. Don't waste your brain to memorize. But if you can memorize all these equations, you may have a big advantage towards each other. Okay, you may have advantage. Advantage because uh, when people still trying to figure out which part of equation should you use inside a very particular questions, uh, you already know. Okay, you have reached the point where, okay, just look at the equation, look at the information given, now you know how, what, how, how to use, what to use, what kind of equation to use. It's very important to understand these equations. Okay, so let's look at equations number one, number four, and number five. So equations number one, obtain V equivalent to V naught plus AT. Okay, V is a V final final velocity v naught is the initial velocity normally we'll just put not well, we never we never use f or i we just use v and v naught plus with a acceleration against time and of course the equation number four the delta x okay delta x uh, delta x is actually displacement and displacement is based on uh, initial uh, Final displacement minus x minus x naught. Okay, meaning that the delta x ni you can substitute x minus s naught equivalent to v naught t plus half a t square. And the last part will be v square equals to v naught square plus two a delta x. Why are we are using delta x, delta x, delta x? Because this is only considering. Okay, the normal, normal uh, conditions in discussing about motion, uh, we will only obtain in x direction. X exists. Kenapa x exists? Contohnya pergerakan kiri kanan. Okay, pergerakan kiri kanan is only occur in x exists. Tetapi kalau naik atas bawah, so that's how and that's what we want to discuss today. Okay, so we will only discuss motion in one dimension, either is in x exists or maybe in y exists. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions? This one, right? If. Are there? Are there? Okay, good. Now we look at the examples here. Okay, a race car starting from rest accelerates at a constant rate of 5 meter per second square. Uh, what is the velocity of the car after they have traveled 100 feet? And how much time has elapsed? And C, calculate the average velocity two different ways. Okay, a race car starting from rest. The word starting from rest meaning that Okay, it must start at uh, the initial velocity of the car, V0 will be zero. Simple? Yes. Okay, that is the keywords you have to remember. The starting from rest is equivalent to zero, meaning that V0 will be zero. Okay, in the process of learning this kind of uh, equations and topics, make sure okay, there's a lot of assume. Okay, we should assume. Kita kena buat anggapan. Anggapan kerana apa dia? Okay, starting from rest, maksud dia uh, halaju awal ataupun initial velocity dia akan jadi ko, kosong. Okay, uh, uh, so look at the equations. Accelerate at a constant rate. Okay, you know, uh, accelerate, that means that is acceleration. Okay, from rest, accelerate, so maksud dia ada acceleration, ada E. At a constant rate, constant rate meaning that for the whole flight, for the whole the problems, the acceleration will only be kept at 5 meter per second square. Look at the unit, 
Okay, when you see the unit meter per second square, you already know this one is the acceleration. Okay, uh, what is the velocity of the car after it has traveled? Travel, travel means length, 100 feet. Okay, that is belong to length. And of course, when you see uh, the value of meter per second square is already as a unit, but not feet. Feet is not as a unit for length. Length must be converted to, uh, feet must be converted to meet meters. So that's why on the first part of the, uh, of, of the examples, okay, they actually try to convert from feet to meters. So they did this kind of uh, conversions. So 100 feet is actually equivalent to 30.5 meters. Why we need 30.5 meters to put inside the equation? Yes, all equations that I showed you just now must involve as a unit only. Okay, you cannot do, uh, if the case of maybe there will be some cases or there are some problems, okay, they will use kilometer per hour, for example, kilometer per hour square. Then it is okay to use that uh, uh, as, as a unit, so to use that uh, unit uh, such as kilometer per hour square, as long as all value given or all value must be consistent. Let's say you use kilometer per hour square, so every value that involves uh, uh, acceleration must use kilometer per hour square. Okay, so don't uh, get confused. Jangan caca berbah ada kat situ. Tolong uh, do a good uh, convert conversion unit. So, so the first part, if you don't, don't have ability to convert the unit, please work on your unit conversions because we need to, to do as fast as you can, right? And of course, uh, must be your, 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 your calculations must be correct. So the first is want to get the velocity of the car after it has traveled. So meaning that we need to find the final velocity after 100 feet. So 100 feet is 30.5 meters, therefore they will bring, okay, in the questions have V0 and also uh, E, okay, and we can also have our X. So the answer will be, okay, we should use uh, equation, the last equation, V square equals to V0 square plus 2A delta X. So in this case, delta X is 30.5. A is 5 meter per second square and V naught is 0. So therefore, you will get 17.5 meter per second. I'm hoping that okay, while I'm, I'm doing or discussing or try to give you more clear picture, so please you at home, please get your calculator together with you and try to punch out all the values. Make sure you will get the same value as uh, my slides. Okay, so on the part, on the part B, how much time has elapsed? Okay, how much time? So we need to establish the equations. Of course, uh, equations that involve time only has two. Okay, which means V equals to V naught plus 80 or maybe uh, delta X equals to V naught T plus half 80 squared. Right, so in this case, we will use a V equals to 80 plus V naught or, or you can actually substitute V to the, uh, from the answers from part A. And of course, equivalent to A against time because V naught is already zero and therefore T is equivalent to 3.5 seconds. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's uh, let's say we want to convert from, uh, let's say feet to meter. This, uh, if the numbers given is like 30.123, like, let's say the decimal places is too much, how much decimal places should we take? Okay, um, normally uh, on this part, on this part, a good, very good question. Uh, we actually don't consider much in terms of uh, significant figures and decimal point. But uh, for the decimal, uh, we actually may took, okay, we may take uh, about two or three. Uh, the most is three decimal point uh, for the final answers, okay. So don't take more than three. Uh, decimal point unless it is stated in your questions to get four decimal point okay Aaron? all right so thank you okay good so the last part uh, calculate the average velocity 
uh, using two different ways. Okay, it's using two different ways. You can see here, the first uh, average velocity is using a uh, initial uh, change in delta x. Okay, change in delta x over change in time. So that will give you uh, xf minus xi equivalent to 30.5 and tf minus ti equals to 3.5. So in the end, you will get 8.71 meter per second. Look at how they perform the equations, how they perform the questions. Look at the structure. Okay, they put the equations, they substitute into the equations, and lastly, uh, they obtain the final answer. That's how you should write okay, whenever you uh, you try to answer the test or maybe uh, the final part. Okay, so the second way is to forget the average velocity is using uh, V0 and V because they have two possible values. Okay, V0 is 0 and V is 17.5. That's how uh, we obtain at, from part A. Okay, from part A, we get 17.5. And now if we divide by 2, you will get 8.75 meter per second. So that concludes we, yeah, is actually... Uh, they want to make sure that the value of average speed is always the same, okay? Uh, regardless of how you do, how the technique you use. Uh, so, in fact, we can easily check the answers. Okay, for example, for first example. So, let's look at the second example. <clears throat> so, a car traveling at a constant speed. What does he mean by constant speed? Meaning that um, when the car travel, it will travel only in 24 meter per second. Okay, for the whole line, it will only uh, travel at 24 meter per second. Meaning that uh, the first time the t equals to 0, 24, t equals to 1, 24, 3 equals to 3, 24. So that's how you de uh, define as constant speed. Meaning that uh, on a real term, uh, the constant speed have been introduced to make sure you understand that during the constant speed, acceleration becomes... How many? Acceleration jadi berapa kalau constant speed? Zero. 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 Yes, definitely. Zero. Acceleration will become... Yes, acceleration will become zero. Okay, so passes a trooper. Okay, a trooper, a ranger lah. Okay, ada satu kereta. Okay, move at a constant speed. Passes through a trooper hidden behind a billboard. So let's say you have a billboard and uh, behind the billboard, okay, there's a trooper. Okay, put there. Uh, so to, uh, to, to, to maybe do some, uh, macam speed trap lah. Okay. So one second after the speeding car passes the billboard, the trooper set off in chase with a constant acceleration t equals to three meter per second squared. Okay, so first uh, the traveling car have a twenty four meter per second, and then one second after the speeding car, meaning that one second after the speeding car uh, passes through the billboard, the trooper chasing the car. Okay, so the question asks you, how long does it take for the trooper to overtake the speeding car? Remember, to overtake the speeding car, there will be times that you should understand this. In order for us to, to overtake the car, make sure, okay, there will be a time that both car, okay, have the same displacement, have the same, uh, should I correct, jarak yang sama. Okay, jarak dan sesaran yang sama. Meaning that should, uh, the, the car and the trooper should be side by side right now. So that's why when we want to, 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 to overtake, so we should know uh, how many times should we uh, do or should we proceed uh, to overtake the car. So how to do that? So they actually came up with this kind of equations, which means the X car, meaning that the displacement of the car, the, the car that travel at 24, and of course the displacement of the trooper, the ranger, should be equivalent to each other. Why? Because we need to if, uh, we need to uh, show uh, what is time. So in this case, okay, the X now, 
Okay, taken from the previous equations, like I've said, x equals 2 x naught plus b naught t plus half a t squared is equivalent to x naught plus v naught t plus half a t squared for the trooper and for the car on the left side and for the trooper on the right side. Okay, so look at the value. Okay, when you see the value, so the x naught, okay, the second line at part A, the second line, x naught is equivalent to now you try to imagine uh, on the on the on the third line so x naught will be 24 how does it know 24 okay in the question doesn't show any 24 meters okay on the any 24 meters it doesn't give any hint to you but there is some 24 meter per second inside the question and how can we relate 24 meter per second to the displacement? Okay, so to overtake the car, so nampak eh, displacement ni ialah, uh, we should see uh, the car of the, the, the displacement of the car and the trooper is side by side. Okay, of course dalam situation ni, a trooper tu berjaya pun potong car tu, berjaya potong. Tetapi pada masa bila, pada masa berlaku bila, maksudnya let's say the question asks you, uh, after the considering the the examples uh, giving you t equals to 16.9 second for example kalau pada masa 15 second adakah trooper tu dah potong car soalan saya belum only side by Kenapa side belum sebab 15 15 second 15 second dia dah potong ke belum 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 Definitely belum sebab dia hanya boleh potong car tu bila masa dia lebih daripada 16.9 second. Ha, so that is the concept that I want you to grab. Okay, masa dia can say kalau 17 second dah potong dah? Dah. 17 dah potong sebab dia lagi besar daripada 16.9 second. Sebab 16.9 second is the time where the car and the trooper is actually side by side. So that's why kita boleh uh, samakan car dengan trooper. So physics have a lot of assume, assuming we should assume this, we should assume this. So that's why we should understand that the displacement of the car should be equal to displacement of the trooper. At what? At time t equals to 16.9 second. Now how can we get that? Yes. Okay. So the first look at the third line 24. How to get 24 from the 24 meter per second? What does it mean by 24 meter per second? Meaning that in one second, the car will move 24 meters. So let's look at the questions. Look at the um, fourth line. Okay, sorry, second line. One second after the speeding car passes the billboard, the trooper set off in chase with a constant acceleration. One second after, one second after, meaning that after one second, then the trooper begin to chase the car. Selepas satu, satu saat, baru dia fikir untuk kejar kereta tu. Sebelum tu, belum lagi. Dia baru lepas, selepas satu second, barulah trooper tadi decide nak kejar. Okay, so that's why we put 24. And V0, V0 is 24. T is what we want to find. And in this case, okay, half a T square, you can see here a constant speed, meaning that acceleration becomes zero. So that's why half a T uh, on the left part, okay, it becomes zero on the left part. But on the right right part, you will see x naught will be zero. This is where uh, uh, it begins to it begins to uh, accelerate. Okay, so x naught becomes zero. V naught. How about v naught? V. Okay, the trooper doesn't have uh, find initial velocities. Okay, now the trooper only have uh, acceleration. Okay, that's why plus half tiga t square three t square, and therefore you will obtain. Okay, you will obtain some quadratic function. So you do some, use that, this calculator to get the uh, t because you, you will have two, uh, you will be, uh, you may have more than one t. So just eliminate the negative part. It just only took the positive part, which means the t 
uh, for the trooper to overtake the car will be 16.9 seconds. Okay, 16.9 seconds. And look at the part B. Okay, how fast is the trooper going at that time? And therefore, we, you will use the same time and you will substitute into this equation to get 50.7 meter per second. Okay, that will be the two examples, okay, for the motion in one dimension for X exists. Okay, for X exists. We have any questions so far? Okay, okay. Sir, may I know how to get the X node again? X node, okay. X node is given inside the inside the questions. The question asks you, uh, look at the second line. Second line, eh, on the last part, one second after the speeding car. Satu saat selepas kereta yang berkelajuan tadi melalui billboard, Okay, trooper set off in the chase. Okay, trooper tu mula, okay, untuk mengejar kereta tadi dengan acceleration yang tetap itu 3 meter per second square. Maksudnya, satu second selepas speeding car passes the billboard. So, selepas satu second, maksudnya satu second dah berapa banyak dah kereta tu gerak? 24 meter. Sebab apa? Sebab kita ambil daripada constant speed yang atas ni. Because this car will move 24 meter per second. 24 meter per second ialah maksud dia 24 meter in one second. Meaning that one second that car will travel 24 meters. Uh, sebab tu lah kita boleh letak 24 meters tu dekat. Understood Very well. Teruskan. Uh, Uh, kalau dikatakan soalan uh, one second tu dia tukar kepada maybe after five second tu baru dia after the speeding car maksudnya one second tu tukar five second so jawapan 16.9 tu kena tambah lima ke or uh, lima tu kena masuk dalam equation Okay sekejap macam mana? After one, after five seconds baru dia realise baru dia nak kejap? Ah, yes. ah. Okay kalau after Nanti five kalau seconds maksud mas, maksudnya dia akan influence dekat part Uh, tengok ya uh, ni, uh, tengok ya uh, jawapan tu, jawapan tu dekat line nombor tiga yang ada 24 tu. Uh, dekat 24 tu tak boleh pakai 24. Kat situ. Oh. X not dia kena kena kali dengan Jalan 5 ni. dulu. Ha, 24 kali 5 dulu. Uh, sebab dia dah jadi 5 seconds. Kalau kat saya macam ni lah. Contoh dia, after 2 seconds, then the uh, the trooper realise to uh, apa, to chase the car. And then katalah after 2 seconds maksudnya 24 times 2 dulu maksudnya jadi 48 baru boleh letak dekat X not. Uh, in, in, in the sense in the in the sense of uh, the car still travel at 24 meter per second. Maksudnya car tu dia, dia memang gerak 24 meter per second je. Uh, okay. So that's how uh, when, okay thank you. When you deal with uh, the problems okay, okay don't think just uh, one equation you can solve everything. Okay, maybe you need two or three equations. Uh, maybe you should polish your skills in uh, determining uh, the rules for the uh, quadratic functions. Okay, there are some uh, 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 a certain possible, possible uh, a certain skills that you need to polish up. Okay, of course, you need to understand the concepts of speed also. Okay, so now uh, before we uh, continue with the free falling objects, so let's uh, watch some videos regarding the free falling objects. Okay, let's Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. My name is Madam Fadiatul Hasinah binti Muhammad. Today we will continue chapter 2 which is motion in one dimension. For today we will cover subunit of chapter 2 which is 2.4 free falling object. At the end of the session, students should be able to apply the kinematic equation for constant acceleration to free falling object.
A freely falling object is any object moving freely under the influence of gravity alone and it's not depends on the object's original motion. All objects falling near the Earth's surface fall with a constant acceleration. Acceleration tells you how fast the velocity changes for every second. The acceleration is called the acceleration due to gravity and indicated by the symbol of G. The value or the magnitude of G is 9.80 meter per second square and G is always direct downward, which is toward the center of the Earth. It's conventional to define up as a positive and down as a negative. So, in this case, the gravitational acceleration is A equal to negative G equal to negative 9.8 meter per second square. Ignoring air resistance and assuming G doesn't vary with altitude over short vertical distance, free fall is constantly accelerated motion. Okay, let's do a simple experiment before we move further. A ball and a light piece of paper are dropped at the same time. Guess which one is true? A. The ball and the paper reach the floor at almost the same time. B. The ball reach the floor first before the paper. C. The paper reach the floor first before the ball. So, what's your answer? The answer will be B. The ball reached the floor first before the paper. Okay, before we look at the explanation, let's look at the experiment too. A ball and a light piece of paper are dropped at the same time. Actually, this is same as experiment 1. But now, the paper will crumple up. So, guess which one is true? So, the answer will be a. The ball and the paper reach the floor at almost the same time. Hmm. Can you explain why? The greater the surface area of the paper, the greater the effect of air resistance. If you can eliminate the air resistance completely, then both objects will hit the ground exactly in the same time because they only have the influence of the same gravity, which is Earth gravity. This is another example effect of air resistance. Near the surface of the Earth, all objects experience approximately the same acceleration due to gravity. Free fall is the motion of an object subject only to the influence of gravity. In the absence of air resistance, all objects fall with the same acceleration. At a given location on the Earth, and in the absence of air resistance, all objects fall with the same constant acceleration. The expression of free-falling object doesn't necessarily refer to an object dropped from rest, but it also refers to the object thrown upward or downward. For object drop, initial velocity is zero. So V0 here is initial velocity. Let up be positive. Down will be negative. Generally, we use y instead of x since free fall is moved in the vertical motion. The gravitational acceleration is g equal to negative 9.8 meter per second square as g is direct downward. For object thrown downward, the initial velocity not equal to zero as we thrown the object with the velocity. And the initial velocity will be negative because of the object is thrown downward. For object thrown upward, initial velocity is upward so it will be positive. The instantaneous velocity at the maximum height here equal to zero because of at this point object will stop for the moment before it turn back to the ground. The gravitational acceleration g is negative 9.8 meter per second square everywhere in the motion as g is direct downward. 
This is example of the symmetrical motion. When time to reach the maximum is equal to the time to hit the ground or to reach the initial point. They also have a motion where it is non-symmetry or called as non-symmetrical motion. Later, I will show one example on the non-symmetrical motion. If we have the non-symmetrical free-fall situation, we need to divide the motion into segments. The possibilities include upward and downward motion. So, this is the situation for symmetry and this is for non-symmetry. Okay, just want to recall back all the equation that you have learned in subtopic 2.3. This is all the equation I use in situation with uniform acceleration. Okay, now let's look example 2.8 taken from 11 edition survey textbook, page 50. A ball is thrown from the top of a building with an initial velocity of 20 meter per second straight upward at an initial height of 50 meter above the ground. The ball just missed the edge of the roof on its way down. Determine A. The time needed for the ball to reach its maximum height. To find the time needed for the ball to reach its maximum height, First thing you need to do is list down all the information given from the question. You have initial velocity V0 equal to 20 meter per second. Y0 equal to 0. Y0 is the initial position of the person. T equal to 0. T is the time just before the ball is thrown upward. Then you need to identify which equation you want to use. You can use equation V equal to V0 plus AT or AT plus V0. As you know that at maximum height, V equal to 0. By calculating this, you can find the value for time needed for the ball to reach its maximum height or T equal to 2.04 seconds. Again, you need to remember that the gravitational acceleration always equal to negative 9.8 meter per second square as gravity is downward. For B, find the maximum height. Again, at maximum height, V equal to 0. By using the equation delta y equal to y minus y naught equal to v naught t plus half a t square. So you need to find the value of y here. So you will get the value of y maximum equal to 20.4 meter. Alright, so now look at question C. Question asks to find the time needed for the ball to return to the height from which it was thrown and the velocity of the ball at that instant. Means that question need to find T here. Okay, let's identify which equation you want to use. You can use equation delta Y equal to V naught T plus half A T square. Okay, delta Y equal to zero. Because of at this original position, y equal to 0 minus initial position equal to 0. So, by calculating this, you can find t equal to 4.08 second. Actually, there are another way to find t at this position. Because of previous, you have find t at the maximum, right? So, due to this symmetrical motion, when you have t at the maximum point, you can times by 2, you will got the t at this position. So, t will be 4.08 second. Okay, now look at for velocity of the ball at that instant. So, you can use equation v equal to v naught plus at. Again, 
A is the gravitational acceleration must equal to negative 9.8 meter per second square as gravity is always downward. So you got the negative value for velocity which is negative 20 meter per second. Negative is referring to the velocity of the ball downward. Alright, so now look at for question D. The time needed for the ball to reach the ground. So, question asked to find T right here. Okay. So, you can use equation delta Y equal to V naught T plus half A T square. Again, we use delta Y equal to negative 50 meter because of V set. Y is negative below the zero, meaning that this is your reference point here, Y equal to zero. Anything above zero will be positive, below zero will be negative. So that's why your delta Y will be negative 50 meter. By calculating this, you can find T equal to 5.83 second. So, last question. Question E, the velocity and position of the ball at T equal to 5 seconds. You can try by your own for this question, yeah? Alright. Okay, now let's look example 2. Suppose that a ball is dropped from a tower 70 meter high. How far will it have fallen after a time t equal to 1 second and t equal to 2 second? Please ignore a resistance. Okay, you need to list down the information given which is a ball is dropped, meaning that initial velocity equal to 0, height of the tower is 70 meter, Time given is 1 second and 2 second. Okay, then you need to identify which equation you want to use. You can use equation delta y equal to y minus y naught equal to v naught t plus half a t square. Now we do for time 1 second first. So, delta y equal to 70 meter. V naught equal to 0. T just substitute with 1 second plus half A T square. Again, A equal to negative 9.8 meter per second square. Negative sign you can put here or here. Doesn't matter. You still get the answer. Negative 4.905 meter. Then same goes to the time equal to 2 second. Just substitute T with the 2 second and T here with the 2 second. You can get the negative 19.62 meter. Note that all answers are negative because of the final position is below the initial position which is downward. For summary of free fall, every object that moving upward will have the positive velocity while moving downward will have the negative velocity. The gravitational acceleration always negative 9.8 meter per second square everywhere in the motion as the gravity is direct downward. Since free fall object is about moving in one direction, we only refer to the y axis. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, this one is called free fall.
Okay. So what is free fall? Okay. A free falling object is an any object moving freely under the influence of gravity alone. Okay. So meaning that uh, this is the motion that will be considered as a motion in one dimension only. Meaning, but uh, definitely will concentrate on the y axis because free fall normally uh, falling means uh, the object will be uh, will be able to fall in the presence of the gravity. Okay, so that's why when they did the experiments on determining uh, which which ball, maybe ball or maybe a piece of paper. So in the in the presence of vacuum, what will happen to both papers and also ball, uh, feathers, uh, feathers and uh, an object. So this is all due to the gravity. Okay. The, the value of G is always 9.8 meter per second square. And, and of course, uh, where, is, where can we use G inside the equation? Okay, so I can show you afterwards. So this is the experiment they did, okay, to make sure uh, what is the factor that uh, um, them, the uh, uh, menyebabkan bola ataupun ke, gumpalan kertas itu berbeza dengan bola dan juga um, apa, kertas yang tidak digumpal. Okay, crumpled. Okay, so uh, this is because the free fall is a motion of an object subject only to the influence of gravity. So in the presence of the vacuum, let's say if you fill the tube with the air and you you fill the tube, you evacuate all the air in the, on the next part, so you actually make the tube become vacuum, meaning that no air. When there is no air, no air resistance. So because of that, okay, regardless of the shape or the uh, of let's say the feather and also the rock, it will definitely falls under the same time. Okay. Okay, so okay, there are a few things that we should know about getting uh, to know about the free fall. So let's uh, concentrate on this part of the chapter. Okay, so let's do uh, you know, a recap on the one dimensional motion with constant acceleration. So we already did the examples, but that one is for exists in X exists. But right now we want to make sure that we did all the equations in Y exists. So what will happen? Because all situation will be in the uniform accelerations, okay? Because right now we want to change uh, the A to become G, okay? So this is how you can exploit the uh, cons uh, one dimensional motions equations, okay? So let's look at this example. So everybody, please uh, take a snapshot uh, or maybe you, you do have to eh, tolong ambil gambar uh, equation ni, soalan ni sebab saya akan tunjukkan um, cara untuk nak solvekan dia eh, untuk kita discuss balik ok, dah? dah sudah? dah okay, so I will stop this dah. one and Sejak ada soalan tadi, oh, ada. Okay, so Okay, let's look. So, the free form. 
part is free fall. Okay, dalam Melayu kita panggil dia sebagai jatuh bebas. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, it will fall. Okay, the motions. One is motion in one dimension. Okay, apa maksud motion in one dimension again? Okay, it only took Uh, take one exist at one particular time. Meaning that kalau di, kita tengah discuss pasal Y, dia hanya duduk dalam Y je. So, kalau kita jatuhkan barang, contoh dia, if try to uh, to make the 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 things, okay, free fall, uh, did the free fall on things, so um, we must make sure that uh, we must assume that all things or all objects that we the undergoes a free fall motion must fall or must be thrown uh, make sure that it's directly straight upward or maybe straight downward okay maksud dia kita tak boleh make, you know, kalau kita ada satu let's say ball kita kena make sure dia kalau this is the okay, let's say this is a Cartesian coordinate of x and y so make sure the ball will fall directly Okay, straight. Okay, straight downward or maybe straight upward. Ini nama dia. Straight upward and this one is straight downwards. Ah, Ini antara keywords, keywords yang penting whenever you deal with something related to free fall. Kadang-kadang kita nak make sure ini nak pakai free fall ke nak pakai uh, projectile. Projectile tu chapter lepas ni kan. Uh, kita nak pakai yang mana satu. So which one should we use? So definitely kalau saya, kalau dia jatuh, dia jatuh straight kalau exist masa dia jatuh pada Y, dia tak pergi. Contoh dia, kalau contoh yang kita tak nak ni, contoh dia kita jatuhkan barang. Uh, we drop the ball. Sepatutnya kita jatuh macam ni tapi dia jatuh macam ni. Uh, this is not free fall. Okay, not a free fall. Uh, kan, biasalah kita jatuhkan barang daripada tempat tinggi ke tempat rendah. So free fall ni is very hard uh, to, to, uh, to make sure that we can actually use the equations. Okay, sebab biasanya kalau dalam keadaan yang di sebelah sini, okay, okay this is not a free fall motion. Okay, uh, last ni ingat this is not free fall, this is a projectile. Okay, we will learn the projectile motions in the and in next week okay on next week so we must be able to make sure it must be straight downward or straight upward okay dia mesti jatuh ke atas straight atau jatuh ke bawah straight okay so dalam situation ini we will use a three equations like number one okay we will use v equals to v naught plus a t okay the second one We will use v equals to uh, v square equals to v not square plus 2a delta x and pada masa sama juga because of dia ialah y exists so we will also use v 2a delta y okay so masa dia that is number two and number three we will use maybe x equals to x not plus b not t plus half a t squared. Okay, don't get confused. Eh? Lain mana saya datang equation ni? Okay, dia equation ni sebenarnya kalau kamu sama sekolah dulu, kamu guna s equals to u t plus half a t squared. Okay, ini dalam masa sekolah dulu kamu pakai. Tapi sis kita di sini, uh, bila kita discuss, when we try to discuss s, s is a displacement. Okay, when we talk about displacement, okay, it can be either okay, from point to point, contoh dia 10 tolak 8 dapat 2. Tapi kalau displacement kita cerita 2 straight, straight so awak boleh masuk terus. Kan? So, uh, this part, okay, we actually give you delta x. Sebab delta x tu ialah ada x minus x naught. Sebab itulah uh, bila kita gantikan delta x dengan s, so it will become x minus x naught equals to v naught t plus half a t squared. Okay, a t squared. So, yang x naught ni kita bawa pergi belah sana so that's why dia jadi macam tu. So, lagi satu kita buat y equals to 
y not plus b not t plus half a t squared. Okay, so well, now we have one equations. We have two equations and we have three equations. Okay. Ya, ingat eh, yang, yang dalam kotak tu walaupun ada dua, it's not because of dua tapi saja biasanya normally kita hanya hafal yang X. Yang Y kita tak buat. Okay. So Y ni is actually definitely uh, untuk pre-fall. It's memang kita akan pakai untuk pre-fall. Right. So there are three equations involved and what to use. Uh, the most important thing in pre-fall you need to remember that A is always equals to the negative G. Okay, of course the value of G is always 9.8 meter per second square. G nilai dia ialah 9.8 meter per second square. So therefore, A is equivalent to negative 9.8 meter per second square regardless of, okay, regardless of uh, either the object is going upward or going downward. Okay, maksudnya dalam keadaan objek tu dia baling ke atas or dia baling ke bawah, jatuh ke bawah dan sebagainya we still use A equals to negative G because that's what you mean by free fall. Free fall is when you the object is in the air with the presence of the gravitational acceleration. Kena faham eh? Ha, object in the air. Jadi walaupun di kita gunakan perkataan free fall bukan bermaksud dia semata-mata masa tengah jatuh je. Masa tengah naik ke atas pun kita consider sebagai free fall. Istilah dia because free fall lebih kepada ini. A equals to negative G and A is equivalent to negative 9.8 meter per second square. Okay. Sebelum ni dalam dalam yang before this, okay, katalah tadi kita tengah buat pasal trooper dengan car tadi. So we will only learn acceleration but not 9.8. Okay, the acceleration we need to calculate. We need to find or maybe is given inside the questions. Okay, but on this part, okay, the acceleration, it will be good, it will be equivalent to the gravitational acceleration. So, A bersamaan dengan negative 9.8. So, one thing about this topic is that you don't have to worry in terms of acceleration because it's already, okay, stated as gravity. But you need to remember that the acceleration is always up, okay, is always a negative G. A is always equivalent to negative G. Apa nilai G? G is always 9.8. How about negative G? Negative 9.8. So when people ask you what is the value of uh, check gravitational acceleration, your answer will be 9.8. What is the, the value of acceleration? Acceleration is negative 9.8. Uh, so jangan confuse. Okay. Acceleration negative 9.8. Gravity 9.8. Sebab A dengan G ialah sesuatu yang berbeza. Okay. Good. So right now you should understand these four things. Okay. The equations. And number two is uh, how to uh, uh, how to use the A equals to negative G. Okay. Now so let's go back to the questions. Okay. In, So this is the questions, okay. So the question yang saya suami gambar tadi, so it's all, it's about one man that uh, okay sitting or not standing on top of the buildings, okay, holding a ball, okay, and and the height of the ball to the ground is 50 meters, okay. It's a 50 meters and of course this man will throw, okay, throw the ball, throw the ball, Sima, the ball is thrown from the top of a building with an initial velocity, okay, with initial velocity, so V0 equals to 20 meter per second, straight upward, okay, look at the, look at the, how the terms have been, we use the terms straight upward, meaning that that will be the free fall, okay, straight upward, meaning that they're baling ke atas straight, naik ke satu, and then, at an initial height of 50 meters above the ground, okay, up the ball just misses the edge of the roof on its way down, so meaning that dia akan dibalik straight sampai atas, and bila masa nak turun, Okay, of course, 
this ball will reach its maximum point and it goes down and miss the edge. Maksud dia, dia tak dapat tangkap balik lah ball tu. Ball tu akan terus turun straight sampai bawah ni. So that uh, will give you the problems to to solve. Okay. So definitely here you will get the maximum height. Here. Okay, this is the maximum height. What happened at maximum height? Ma maximum height. So the ma at maximum height, V is equivalent to zero. Okay, V is equivalent to zero. And one more thing, you should understand the concepts or how well, well is your reference point. So the reference point meaning what? So the building or the, 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 the ball, the height of the ball thrown at the top of the building is actually 50 meters above the ground. So let's say this is ground. So it's 50 meters above the ground. So you can easily okay, uh, understood this thing. Okay. So let's say you take uh, the point where the ball leave your the, the man's hand at zero meter. So everything is below zero meter will be negative 50. Okay, so you may take these points of reference or maybe if you don't want to get confused, maybe you can use uh, zero meters okay, on the ground and set up as neg uh, 50 meters above the ground. So this one is also correct. Okay, you can either take uh, on the first one or the second uh, point of reference. So we need to establish this thing. Because we need to know where is the initial point, where is the final point, okay, where is the maximum point. So that's why uh, in the process of learning the free fall, your free falls or the topics of motion, you need to know the most important thing is where is the time. The time can do the talking, okay. So time will tell you what happened at this point, what happened at that particular point. So that's why you need to establish time. Okay, you need to calculate time. So that's why when you look at the questions, the first question will be the time needed. Okay, time needed for the ball to reach maximum. Okay, maximum height. So what to do when we do have uh, a questions that ask you to find the time needed to reach the maximum height. In order to understand this one, okay, we should figure out there are three equations that can we use. Okay, or how or how to determine the time so we can actually eliminate uh, the the equations that does not involve any time, such as equation number two. There yeah? there are no t inside the equation in, in, inside inside the equation. So the t is only. Uh, at equations number one and number three. So we can eliminate equations number two and therefore for the specifically for the maximum height, you know maximum height, okay, you will use V equals to V naught plus AT. Okay, hopefully all of you have already uh, uh, already have uh, uh, the questions, okay, maybe you do have a calculator, so please okay, do it together with me, okay. At, maximum high and V will become zero. So this one zero will become, uh, V becomes zero, and V naught is 20. Okay, plus where, but look uh, how uh, I'm gonna write these things. A is equivalent to negative G, therefore the answer should be negative 9.8 times T. So therefore, yeah. okay, E is equivalent to a 20 divided by 9.8 and of course you will get 2.04 seconds so that will give you that's okay look at how i'm solving the problem okay i put the equation first and then i substitute the prop uh, the substitute the value and then finally with the proper uh, annotations and units okay look at what how i did the questions and how about b okay the b asks you the maximum height What is the maximum height? So the maximum height meaning that you want to find uh, the length of the height. 
Okay, the length of the height. So the length is considered as what? So from these equations, maybe you can eliminate uh, equation number one because it doesn't involve any length. Length will be occur in chapter in, in equation number two and only number three. Yes. Okay. So I'm using equations number three. Okay. Because equation number three uh, do have time and length. Okay. So for example, you have y equals to Okay, y equals to y naught plus v naught t plus half k a t squared. Okay, y equals to y naught plus v naught t plus half a t squared. And we want to know what is y. And of course, okay, the ball is starts from zero. Okay, uh, I I am using uh, main reference point number one, meaning that uh, the balls of uh, this man. Okay, happen to be um, y equals y equals zero. Okay, y equals to zero, and then it will end at negative fifty. Okay, so y not is zero plus w. What is v not? V not is twenty. Okay, what is time at the maximum height? Maximum height will be two point zero four taken from the answers uh, on part A and half. Okay negative 9.8, 2.04 square. So the answer should be equivalent to 20.4 meters. Okay, the answer is 20.4 meters. So that will be the value, the will be the answers. And right now, let's look at question C. This question C asks you to find the time needed for the ball to return to the height. Okay, from the ball to return to the height from which it was thrown. So meaning that where? So when you throw the ball, when you throw the ball, it comes to the uh, maximum height and it will goes back to the original, uh, original height. Okay, just the original height but not on the same uh, on the same point. Okay, same level. Meaning that at this point, this is, uh, we should know what is uh, time here. Okay, so as you can see, as I mentioned in this, uh, if I answer the question B with maximum height equals to 70.4, will it be correct? Uh, the answer is yes, because of 70.4 is considering uh, 50 meters uh, together uh, from the ground, from the ground. Okay, 20.4, the answers is from the point of uh, reference point at this, at, at, at this hand. Okay. Uh, tempat dia baling tu, uh, dikira 20.4 daripada situ. Okay, kalau 70.4, it's consider 50 daripada bawah. Okay, uh, so that means kita kena, we will see. Okay, so betul juga. Tapi kena ceritakan macam itulah as a point of reference. Okay, so on part C, so how to do that? Okay, so at this point, okay, uh, this is what we call as, what we call as uh, symmetrical motion. Symmetrical motion meaning that uh, when the ball lift the hands and the ball will fall on the same level as the hands. Okay, maksudnya dia, dia tempat kita balik, Dia akan naik dan dia akan turun pada satu ketinggian. Dia akan pergi pada satu ketinggian. And bila dia jatuh, dia jatuh pada level yang sama pada tangan kita dan kita lepaskan tadi. So that's why we call as symmetrical. Okay, so symmetrical, maksudnya kalau dia naik 2.04 seconds, dia turun pun 2.04 seconds. So it's like we just time, okay, time t equals to 2 times 2.04 seconds to get 4.08 seconds. This one is considered correct. Okay, it looks simple, but this one is for symmetrical only. Okay, look, okay, it's not, uh, um, if you are considering um, a symmetrical motion, then you can use this thing. Okay, but occasionally we can uh, use a, maybe a slightly different uh, kind of ways to answer to, to answer that. So we can use y equals to y naught plus 
V dot T plus half A T square. Okay. So what is Y? Y is zero. Because it lives as Y. It live. So meaning that we should point this one is Y naught and this one is Y. Okay. So Y is zero. Y naught is zero. V naught. V naught is 20. And times T plus half negative 9.8. T square. So definitely at this point, okay, you may also find that T is equivalent to 4.08 seconds. Okay. Uh, if you look at this equation, this equation is a quadratic equation. Therefore, it will you will also get another T that maybe have a negative value. Okay. T with a negative value, you can just ignore the negative value. So just take the positive one. So that will also give you 5.08 seconds. Okay, how about um, uh, the velocity of the ball at that instant? Okay, the velocity, so now you are using V equals to V naught plus AT. So 20 times with negative 9.8 times with 4.08 seconds to get uh, negative 20 meter per seconds okay negative 20 meter per seconds so look here you must put negative because uh, the velocity is on the way down on the way down the velocity becomes negative okay that is for part c and about part d okay time needed for the ball to reach the ground time needed for the ball to reach the ground again where is the ground here so that is the ground. And as I'm saying to you, okay, I uh, the ball will leave, okay, according to my uh, sketching, the ball will leave as at y equals to zero. And this one it should be the height of y naught, and this one should be the height of y. So my in my reference, y naught is zero and y is negative 50. So that's why okay, we need to 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 check uh, to to, to to calculate time needed, time to reach ground, so you can obtain y equals to y naught plus v naught t plus half a t squared. Look, okay, always start with the equations. Okay, always start with the equations because sometimes the equation will boost you, okay, will give you uh, support, okay in terms of determining, okay, betul ke tak, betul salah ke tak, okay? So, Y should be negative 50, Y will be 0, plus dengan 20, okay, plus dengan T, plus dengan half, negative 9.8 T square, right? Then again, you will get these things into the quadratic uh, function, and use your calculator, say, don't, don't do a normal quadratic function like you did on AdMax, Okay, use your calculators. Okay, just punch in the values. Okay, make sure it's correct. And you will have T equivalent to 5.83 seconds. 5.83 seconds. Just eliminate the, uh, the just eliminate the, the value that have negative seconds. Okay. So the answer is 5 equals to 8.83 seconds. And lastly, D on the E part, uh, the velocity and the position, okay, V and Y, position of ball at, at T equals to 5 seconds. <clears throat> so when you look here, uh, from the answers on part D, on part D, uh, you will have, uh, when the ball reaches the ground, the time is 5.83 seconds. So definitely, when the time at 5 seconds, the ball doesn't fall on the ground yet. Okay, so we need to establish, we need to calculate the final velocities and also the final uh, displacement. So how to get V? V is equivalent to V naught, okay, plus AT. Okay, so you may put 20 plus with a negative 9.8 times t equals to 5. So your answer should be equivalent to uh, negative 20, where?
negative 29 meter per second. Okay, and lastly, to get y, y is equivalent to y naught plus v naught t plus half a t squared. And therefore, what is y? y naught is 0 plus with v naught, what is v naught? 20. So times with 5 plus with half negative 9.85 square and therefore you will get negative 22.5 meters okay so that will give you a full how can you solve the problem using free form? Okay. Do you have any problems or maybe you want to ask me anything? So that's how you solve the problem using free form motions. Any questions over? Okay, the most important thing is you must be able to sketch the problem. Maybe there, maybe you are be, you already been given with the figures. So do some sketching. Do okay, chanting lah. Kertas awak tu, you have to jot down all the values. Make sure yeah, it must be logical. Okay, make sure you do set your main your your own reference point. Okay, you should set your own. Uh, values okay, you should know uh, at this particular time look at the logical part okay you have any questions can ask me anything ada soalan tak ada ada Okay, so that's how you did on the next part. So maybe you can try it out um, on the examples, on the next examples about the questions. Okay, uh, maybe the, the, last, the last example is suppose that the ball is dropped V0, okay, V0 equals to zero from a tower of 70 meters high. How far will it have fallen after a time t equals to one second and t equals to two seconds, ignoring air resistance? Okay, so it's quite easy. I don't want to show you uh, this equation. Is much, uh, the question that I show you just now is much more complex. Okay, so when you do have books, so you do have textbook, please look at the examples. Okay, do a triple check, a double check, triple check. Okay, what you should, uh, what you should. Um, uh, how can you solve the problems? Okay, why they use this kind of equation? Can I use another equation or not? So that's how you study physics. Okay, from the equations, do a lot of revision. Don't just uh, look. Okay, okay. Look, tekan calculator sendiri. Okay, betul kan? Every part tu kenapa yang ni negatif? Kenapa ada yang tak ada negatif? Okay, tadi macam kawan awak tanya, kenapa dia dapat 70.4? Kenapa aku dapat 20.4? Apa beza aku punya dengan dia punya? So, always ask that kind of questions. Because that will give you some things that you should learn later. Okay? Very right, very good. So, prepare that next week um, will be the week that you should have your uh, quiz. Okay, your, your big quiz. So you will have a quiz uh, next week. Okay, uh, there must be announcement and announcement later, but I'm not sure uh, which day. So it may take you about a, a few questions, eh? just a few questions. Do a run. Uh, maybe uh, you should, you could understand, you could uh, do some revisions like what you, uh, we already discussed uh, during our first week and today, today's uh, second week, okay? And of course, uh, 
the quiz we also we always involve we only involve in uh, chapter one and chapter two okay so we already done on chapter two so the next week will be chapter three okay chapter three that involve motion in two dimensions okay so please and please uh, please look at the video first okay look at the look at uh, the video share in the google classroom first uh, before you come to class before on monday please tengok dulu so we can straight away discuss uh, discuss uh, the topics okay so i may not uh, maybe i will do some recap on the on the topics but not uh, playing uh, any more videos okay or on our classes okay Okay. So no questions. Okay, so maybe uh, if you don't have any questions, then maybe we'll end the class uh, early. Uh, <clears throat> so please do a revisions on your own. Okay, do a tutorial too. Okay, and of course, tutorial two will be uh, discussed during week three and week four. Okay, there will be two weeks on tutorial two alone. And because uh, we have quite a lot of uh, tutorial two, so we will discuss tutorial two during to, during um, week three and week four. Okay, so please remember okay to study because next week you will have a quiz. Okay, and I'm I'm not sure uh, uh, where uh, when is the is actually the date. So please do a, uh, some preparation. Please prepare yourself for the quiz. Okay. Right, so with that things, I will end the class today uh, if you don't have any problems. And if you do have still have a problems, okay, please uh, go to my future, okay, go to my futures forum. Okay, you can put anything there, right? Or maybe you can share in the chat box or maybe you can put it uh, in, in the Google Classroom. So anything, you can reach me there, right? So thank you very much, class, uh, for your attention. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.